here we go. Yes, welcome to the talk about wireless. And when we planned this talk, we, were, we hoped that we could present you the stuff of the... Uh, Disturbers liability. But it's not that easy. That the German law that makes operators of access points responsible for things that users do. And I want to tell you how what you can do to improve this situation. And I hope that you all engage so that we can take some form in of action in the last times of the before the war. So what is the important point? The largest issue is Abmano, um, which is that they um, ask you to stop it and have to pay some money. But it can also happen that you were asked uh, about that even if you run a wireless for others or a network for others. So some may say you, are, you did not uh, surveil your own network sufficiently and others Normally, there should be no liability for internet providers in Germany, or rather just for in just in a few exceptional cases. One or other of you might remember the CompuServe case in the in 1980s. Uh, that went quite large because some someone wanted to make CompuServe liable for illegal pictures that were being swapped by the internet, and, and the legislator then, I think, reacted rather responsibly and, and created a privilege, a liability privilege, freeing providers from liability for what their users do. This is now in a certain paragraph in the German Broadcast Media Act, paragraph 8. So those that offer certain services commercially, such as providers, um, um, so providers are not responsible for other supposed people's information that is um, that they transmit in a communication network or to those they um, provide access um, with the exception of the provider working together intentionally with the user to provide access. So that should work, shouldn't it? Even if you're a Wi-Fi or wireless LAN provider, you normally don't pay uh, apart from uh, mobile hotspots perhaps but um, this otherwise is, this is exactly the same um, you are just providing access and not actively colluding with users but then there was this judgment from the uh, from from one of Germany's highest courts in 2010 uh, disturbers can be made liable um, without being culprits or participants if they in any way um, contribute to willingly and, and, and adequately and, and causally uh, uh, breaking uh, a protected law, which would normally be an international pro intellectual property law. So this is uh, about uh, a case called The Summer of Our Life, Sommer unseres Lebens, which was probably a movie that the case was about. So how about paragraph 8 of the German Broadcast Media Act? Uh, it did say that providers are not liable. Well, um, the judges uh, in 2000, 2010 quite surprised the whole legal uh, expert community. Uh, because they based this on another paragraph of the German Broadcast Media Act, paragraph 10. Um, paragraph 10 is about hosting privilege. So these judges simply misunderstood the law. Um, they, they checked and rejected an exception, a liability exception, that was about hosting. Um, and they did not apparently check the one mentioned before. So you could then ask yourself, why did it come to that? How did it come to that? What now? Host provider, not access provider? Big surprise from those judges. So what can be done? Some Freifunk uh, members went to the courts. If uh, at, at a time when they were going to be made liable as these servers, and and they were relatively successful. So, lower courts, for example, Charlottenburg, the, uh, which is a district of Berlin, the court there, um, they 
accepted that Wi-Fi providers are providers in the sense of the law. Um, some of them actually use tunneling to get out of this, tunneling uh, their traffic to another country before they let it out on, into the open internet, um, which gets them around any legal problems. Um, and uh, the legal situation it kind of turns here and uh, towards an uh, it provide a privilege for Freie Funk members. So that is good news. But these are lower courts. Uh, at the lowest level in some cases, the district level, then the uh, Munich court, which is a higher level, uh, used European right um, to, to judge that Wi-Fi providers have to be providers in the sense of the law, in, in the sense of this law. So we're still not in clear waters. And uh, the, if Germany's highest courts cannot find a way to, accept, to exempt providers from liability, uh, grassroots providers, Wi-Fi providers, then the law has to be made clearer. And this is what Digitale Gesellschaft is doing, one of the German NGOs. They are um, suggesting reforms of the law. Um, let's call this a pull request <laughs> for, for the text of that paragraph. They ask for two paragraphs to be added to, to say that the exempt, exemption of responsibility also includes commercial and non-commercial providers of, broad, uh, of, of wireless networks that do n are not directed at a restricted uh, and known uh, group of users, public uh, wireless networks. And um, this includes written warnings by lawyers. So this is supposed to foster the spread of public wireless networks by extending the privilege of non-liability to those that offer access. Um, so paragraph four is a certain detail um, because it may, may include um, demands to, to cease services. Um, so this, this draft was, was put into parliament by the left party uh, parliamentary group uh, in the last parliament, who are somewhat marginalized. It was also repeated by the Greens, but politics didn't take it up. And uh, the German government, um, in, particularly, in particular, the econo economy minister, Sigmar Gabriel, head of the Social Democrats, he said, no way. Free wireless LAN is evil. He more or less clearly said that uh, when he introduced the digital agenda of the government in, in the spring. So this is something you can strangely say, um, why is it evil? It's normally something good. But wireless liability, liability uh, said Sigma Gabriel, is neither te technically nor legally a closed question. We don't want to start a call for people to use certain places in the internet anonymously in, in certain public places um, to prepare crimes just because we made a law that, that says that no one is liable anymore. So that is the attitude um, that is also in the draft law that the German government introduced. It's not about fostering f public Wi-Fi. Um, it's, it regards it as a haven for, crim crim for criminality. So every private internet access point, every open Wi-Fi can, of course, be used for illegal things, just like every road can be used to, to drive to a crime scene. Uh, to to access a, a dead mailbox for exchanging info about an attack. So this argument seems quite absurd. Um, uh, to, to treat the internet as something that should not, you know, spread and should not be taken up. So they m introduced this draft law that actually is titled um, fostering supporting Wi-Fi, but in fact, the exact opposite is what's taking place. Now, this is Ziggy Sigmar Gabriel's dilemma. 
open Wi-Fi is evil, but citizens and the economy want free Wi-Fi. So what did they write into their law? Uh, Wi-Fi providers uh, cannot be made liable for an illegal act of a user if they have been if they have taken regular measures um, expectable measures to 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 prevent illegal acts of their users so everyone you don't have to be you don't have to be a lawyer um, that this 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 term measures that can be expected that that can be um, demanded what is this so we have a lack of clarity in the law if it is going to be passed. So even without a law, we have uncertainty. And with that new law, we have uncertainty. Many people just do not dare to fight one of these written warnings that German lawyers like to send that come attached with, with, with a fee. Um, because many colleagues uh, in in the courts have of course seen that these warnings are being abused so there is quite a good chance of, of fighting them but there is a certain risk a financial risk um, so many people say okay I'll, I'll pay this perhaps well not really moderate but but the fee that is lower than the costs could be if I go to the courts so the problem is not being in the right the problem is the legal uncertainty and that prevents people from taking the risk to 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 operate a Wi-Fi and probably be taken to the courts. So this is not about the legal situation as such, but the uncertainty. And if you then look at this term, measures that can be expected, um, this term, reasonable measures will have to be interpreted by the courts until we b before we know what they actually mean and who would dare to to make their wi-fi publicly accessible if some judge somewhere will then have to decide whether that person has then taken those reasonable expectable measures so you can actually ask whether that is enough to, to provide any kind of legal certainty. The reasoning of the government behind the law uh, says that, that they do, but um, uh, actually there is a certain amount of clarification further on in the draft law. Um, so um, what they say is that exemption from liability should not be there as such but there should be reasonable security measures against unauthorized access to the wireless local network. And also, uh, access to the internet should, not, should only be provided to users that have declared during use that they are not going to be breaking the law. So these two provisions will have to be secured, will have to be taken if you want to be exempt from liability. Uh, and and you, let's have to take a look at the second condition first. Uh, provide access only to those users that have declared that during the use they will not break the law. Now, in practice, that means that means you have to install one of these start landing pages that uh, that you get at first access. I always call this the lying page. Um, you don't start using your Wi-Fi differently if you fill out the form on that page. Um, you still have your Twitter client running and uh, th these pages simply suck and they are more or less ineffective. The bad guys just click OK. Um, no one will say, ooh, there's this starting page. I, I better get out of that Wi-Fi. Um, but on the other hand, it's as as annoying and ineffective that those pages are, it's not really tragic. They can be inserted into Freifunk firmware. It it so it could be part of the standard setup that Freifunk, a major German group um, promoting open Wi-Fi, provide. But then there is the second condition. Uh, and uh, and that is reasonable security measures against 
unauthorized access to the local network. Now, the reasoning for that says that the Wi-Fi provider should protect his or her network in an appropriate way, technically against access of, of unauthorized people. So, in particularly, in particular, encrypting the router is a possible measure, says the reasoning. Now, what they mean surely is encrypting the Wi-Fi traffic, but it could also mean voluntary registration of users. Um, that's what the reasoning says, but that is actually not permissible by, by German law. You can't ask, for example, for ID card data. Um, so the only thing that's left really is encrypting your Wi-Fi to protect it against use of unauthorized people. But then that means, but, but then that opens the question, what actually is uh, unauthorized access if this is, if you're talking about a public Wi-Fi, for example, a Freifunk Wi-Fi. So everyone is supposed to be able to access. Um, it's not about particular kinds of use. This is about unauthorized access at all. So if you are running a Wi-Fi that should be open to everyone, then this clause, protecting against unauthorized access, surely does not make clearly does not make any sense. So, what solutions are there for that? A first solution could be, if everyone's authorized, then you should, clearly you can simply skip the securing measures. They don't make any sense. You would have to include one of those splash screens or landing pages, but you do, wouldn't have to encrypt your Wi-Fi. But with a certain amount of legal fantasy, you could also uh, think of the second solution, a network that everyone can access simply is not am admissible because the law says that there have to be authorized and unauthorized users. If, a, if the law talks about this, protecting against un unauthorized access, then there has to be this distinction. And, and that would then, of course, be a catastrophe for Freifunk because um, they would have to distinguish between authorized and unauthorized, which is the exact opposite of a public free uh, Wi-Fi accessible to anyone. In other words, this law, if it would come into practice, uh, depending on how it is interpreted, could it, the way it is going to be interpreted is, is, is very unclear. We have these reasonable measures, we have some explanations, what they could be, but they do not really fit an, an, a public Wi-Fi such as Freifunk. So this draft law is buggy. Uh, the senseless landing page um, should be abolished and uh, there is a high risk that uh, courts find public Wi-Fi illegal and it should be amended has been a lot of criticism from netspolitik.org, from the economy, um, and this was there used to be a distinction between um, f f wireless networks for financial reasons if, uh, for, um, or in private networks, and they that was just stupid, so it was already taken out of the law. So we have to look at how we can work with this new uh, law suggestion. So the first thing is no real problem, but it's stupid. The other thing is that there is a significant risk that uh, courts may decide that free Wi-Fi's may be against the law, that the um, it is not clear who is liable for the connection uh, for the, the things the user do on a free Wi-Fi. So what we want to do, the free Wi-Fi networks, would be destroyed by that. So to look at the law, Digi has created a law idea. It was included to the uh, parliament and it was changed, but it's not too late yet. So talk with your uh, um, members of parliament, and I had made a in pr um, presentation for uh, town providers, and they have good connections to people 
from the, the local um, members of parliament. So if you are local, if you are connected to the local internet service providers, tell them that it's really a catastrophe for local wireless or free wireless. If you say, hey, we want to create a free wireless for the marketplace, so if we it gets like the um, law of the government now uh, suggested that it that could be un legal and unclear. So it still has to go through several discussion rounds and it will has to be submitted finally, but go to the people that talk about that and tell them what where the problem is. So maybe a, a compromise would be that you just have this landing page and although it's annoying, but it wouldn't hurt. So, no. If you don't want to take it how the um, German government sees it at the moment. Then unfortunately we'll have to tunnel again. So if we can't fix the law, we will have to tunnel. So go abroad or create a clear provider. So create um, organizations that are clearly a provider and tunnel all your wireless traffic through them. Another problem, it used to be that we tunneled abroad, but there were problems with the geotagging, so they all got... Yeah, one Freifunk division was actually uh, made into formally, has formally been accepted as an internet provider, so they are exempt. So, thank you very much. That's the Freifunk in the Rhineland, I think. Okay, thanks a lot for me too. Are there any questions? You can line up at, at the microphones uh, in the aisles. We have a lot of people standing there. I'll start on the left. Hello? Ah. You said that we need two user groups, so uh, uh, accepted and not accepted. So if we just open a wireless, that everybody who clicked on yes is a proper uh, is an accepted user, and those who click no are not. Well, that would be a way of interpreting the law. That would perhaps number three in my list of solutions, and it would be very nice if it would be interpreted in, interpreted in that way. But the problem is, it is not clear what the courts will make of this. And of course, there is a large amount of lobbying interest from the industry that engages in, in sending those written warnings with fees. Uh, so a solution that is so, so pragmatic, we will have to see whether um, that will be accepted or if someone from a, a lawyer's firm with a very renowned, renowned name will convince the courts otherwise. That's not something you want to rely on as a provider. Uh, it's the legal uncertainty that, which is the problem. Anything that's not crystal clear in the law will lead to further written warnings by lawyers, that has to be said. Uh, as soon as the law can be interpreted in a certain way, um, we need one that cannot be interpreted in that evil way. Next question from the other microphone, please. Thank you very much for the juristic talk, which I understood. I wanted to I want to meet the advocate. The devil's advocate. So, what would I say if someone asked me, free wireless is all evil, C can be used to for misuse? The most important question with the letter bomb is very well known. Uh, what can you tell him as well? I think the easiest thing you can say is that the internet can be abused, can be misused anyway. There are so many ways of using it anonymously. Structures exist. Uh, UMTS, for example, mobile data networks. Um, this is de facto anonymous because of NAT that is being used, or hard, very hard to identify users. So the argument here goes, Wi-Fi, uh, 
the manifold ways of using the anonymous uh, the internet anonymously is not really extended by public Wi-Fi in a significant way, and that should be the central argument. May I just ask that? Um, they say, hey, you pay, he has an IP address, I can trace back the IP address in, in this public world, that's not possible, so fail. Well, you have to them tell them, sure, you can f trace an IP, but only if you don't consider anonymity if, as a user. Thank you. you can use tools. The other microphone. Well, if I remember correctly, uh, the law says the access to the local network has to be registered to uh, accepted users. So if I have a... Uh, no, that's not actually what the law says. Uh, I can butt in straight away. The reasoning behind the law includes some very absurd things like encryption obligation is u useful to protect uh, local users' data, yes. So clearly the, 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 um, the person writing up the draft had some wild ideas somewhere in the ministry that sound rather nice, but that's not actually in the actual law draft. If we have an unaccepted user, if we needed him, then we could set, uh, write it on the first page. Hey, everybody is allowed to use it, except he has this name, so we have two unaccepted users. Well, that would be a nice hack, wouldn't it? But uh, I think it's a very creative one. I like it. Uh, but I do like it, but of course that leaves us with the old problem of legal uncertainty and as, as, as long as th this law is just a draft law, it's worth fighting for more clarity. Thank you. Good morning. My question is similar to the first. I could ask whether we could take the two uh, encryption and the uh, first page, so if you say we have a shared sequence of password for everybody, and it's only accepted together with... Um, so you put uh, the Wi-Fi password from the public and you say, hey, use this only if it's uh, you accept the rules. It would perhaps, uh, from the point of view of the law, it would be acceptable to, to put the password on your restaurant menus or something, but... Um, but then that would be not a public Wi-Fi, but a certain restaurant's Wi-Fi, and uh, that's not what we're looking for. Well, I come from the Netherlands, and it's even worse there. No, it's <laughs> where I live, in the Sitong city, there is free Wi-Fi, and in Finland it's also acceptable and possible. And now that's my question. Your goal is, of oh, the goal of Gabriel is to to protect the internet property owner. And the lobby of them is there a thought about taking reducing the innovation significantly if there are no public wireless? Germany is probably the an island where there are really few open wireless networks. There's free wireless everywhere, but not in Germany. Well, I don't really believe that this would lead to a significant increase in intellectual property violations, and that's why I think this is a fake argument. It's, of course, being used, and as such, as the interest in itself is justified, but I believe that within the context of, of the Wi-Fi discussion, uh, this is fake because uh, public Wi-Fi is normally are too slow for downloading large amounts of data. Uh, not being really feasible for downloading movies and um, streaming uh, is not really traceable anyway these days in most cases. Whether that whether tr uh, streaming is actually legal is another question. So um, any kind of legal proof is very hard and uh, this is there's a certain lack of, of legal regulation in this area anyway. So that's why I think in the context of the Wi-Fi debate it has to be said that this is not important. The question was does Gabriel think about the loss of... Well, you would have to ask him, of course. <laughs> anyway.
unfortunately, that was the last question. We were at, we're at the end of our time. Unfortunately, someone stole my, my closing remarks. Because uh, uh, my idea was to, to call certain politicians unauthorized and get rid of the problems. That way, it, was, it has been said. Thanks again. And I think any further questions? Yeah, give him that applause.